All right, let me show you a couple of things that Power BI can do, which would not be possible in normal Microsoft Excel. And then I'll explain how to go about it. So don't try to follow or do something with me. I'm just trying to get you guys interested and to get you guys understand as to why Power BI can save a lot of time for you guys when you guys are working, right? So let's just, just observe right now and I'll tell you how to go about it. Now, say for example, I have a table of this sort. I'm just taking very small data extracts over here. So of course, your working file is going to be much more extensive in terms of data. But say for example, I'm looking at this kind of an Excel file over here. Now, when you guys run pivot tables, I'm assuming you understand the basic pivot tables. If I try to run a pivot table on this, I would not be able to do so because ultimately what I want is I want a column with salesperson. Then I want a column with the year given 2013. For example, I would want the data to be say for example, in this way, then I would want these figures. So I know you cannot see, the, okay, I'll just do that. I think I made a mistake. Yeah. And then I would want again the same thing, copy pasted here. Then I would want 2014 copy pasted here. And then I would need these figures over here. So I hope I'm being able to make it a, make a point as to how would you want your data output to be. Once you have the table in the format sales, year and amount, then you would be able to run a pivot table on this. After this table is there, now obviously I've not completed it and I'm obviously not going to be completing it in this manner. Then you'd be able to apply your pivots and all. Before that, you would not be able to apply your pivot tables, right? If you want to apply pivot on this data, if you just some, uh, create a pivot table using this, this these 2013, 14 and 15 is going to be a column header. I would want my column to be year, which is going to be 2013 or 14 or 15, if I want to analyze this data. So basically my question over here is that this data would need to be converted, this data would need to be converted in this format in order to make a pivot. So how do you do these kind of cleaning techniques? Now, please don't tell me transpose because what transpose is going to tell you is it's going to get the salespersons over here and 13, 14, 15 over here. Transpose formula, that is the array formula. Even if you don't know, it's fine. And the transpose function in your pay special, they both are going to be doing just that much. They're not going to be able to create a format of this sort. So how do you do this? When you're going to be using Power Pivot, and uh, the Power BI tool, I'm not showing it to you right away. Uh, there is a file over here. So when you're going to the power pivot, it is going to take you hardly a, a minute or so. And now when I'm talking about it, it is going to take you a minute. That minute is going to be taken whether you have 5,000 line items, 50,000 line items or 5 lakh line items because you're not going to be doing anything manually. And you see your data is going to be coming off in this format. You see the way your data is going to be turning up. You have your salesperson, your attribute and your values. And then you can do whatever analysis you want. You will be able to perform the same. Are you understanding? There are a lot of things. Now say for example, I'll take another alternative for you. So, um, all right, let me just show you. There are too many files actually. So say, suppose I have a data of something of this sort. I can show you the data on Excel also. So let's try and understand over here. Now, basically I'm trying to analyze the sales representative of a particular location. Now, these are the sales representatives. This is the region in which this particular sales rep is working and this is a product they are selling. Now, each sales representative, now in the Eastern region, there is a possibility of Kolkata and there is a possibility that Patna is also part of East, Darjeeling is also part of East. Now, each of the sales representative is in a particular city is in a particular city over here, right? Now your question over here is, say for example, let's say I'll just insert, I need to get the city column over here. Now, when you need to get the city, your city is not depending on East alone because East has got multiple city and sales rep alone is also not going to work because you have to match the sales rep and the region and you need to be able to bring down the city over here. You have to, because you can't just look at the region and get the city and the sales rep might have multiple cities. So we need to get looking at the sales rep, we need to get the cities over here. So over here, basically the idea is the VLOOKUP needs to combine region and sales rep both. If I have to combine both, normally in Excel, what you would do is you would have to 
understand you're not doing a VLOOKUP and an HLOOKUP combination. You have to do two combinations of VLOOKUP. So now what happens is normally what we do is we have to do a concatenate with these two columns, create a unique column name, a unique ID or something of that sort and using that we have to do a VLOOKUP. Are you getting the idea? So we have to do the, we have to create two unique columns and then we'll have to get the VLOOKUP done. But over here when you're looking at say for example there's a function, sorry, there's a function called merge and append wherein we can merge it together and we will be able to, sorry, we will be able to get this line over here. We would be able to get the city over here by matching both the sales rep and the region to another column, to another column in the region, from the region column and we would be able to get the merge, uh, merged table. Are you understanding? So double VLOOKUP, multiple VLOOKUPs will also be able to work in the pivot file. Are you understanding? Then, so whether you're looking at data cleaning, whether you're looking at VLOOKUPs, say for example, if we are looking at something like, um, let me just take it on a file-wise basis. Let's say dynamic grouping. Now, if you notice in this particular area, there are products 1, 2, 3, 4, 18, 19, whatever number of products given. Now, what I have done over here is, in my tables, I have, sorry, In my tables, when you're looking at the product margin, I have defined what is what is low, what is medium and what is high. Once I do this and I'll show the process, so don't bother about the process, just focus on what are the outputs we can generate using Power BI. We we'll look at the processes in a while. Now what we do is the graph is going to be color coded based on low, medium and high based on this table. So are you understanding that we are able to apply conditional formatting to graphs? We are able to apply conditional formatting to graph, which you were not able to do earlier in Microsoft Excel. We were able to apply conditional formatting to cells earlier, but we are not being able to do it to the graphs uh, earlier. Uh, pivot and pivot we've done. And now when you're looking at these visual tools, now say for example, I'm analyzing the profit data of some company. Now this is the actual data that I have available with me. That is showing if you notice on the screen, you've got 2018 quarter three, 2018 quarter four, 19 quarter two, quarter three. Suppose I've taken data only up till 2019 quarter three. Now be very attentive on the screen and uh, uh, focus on my cursor. Now this is the actual data that has been showing an increasing trend. Now what happens is based on this trend, it will take hardly five minutes, maximum five minutes uh, that you're gonna take. And you see that there are forecasts that are being created automatically. So based on this past data, you will have your trend analysis, forecasted trend analysis done. And even when you're looking at the trend analysis, basically you can define the confidence interval also. So what you're doing over here is that in 2020, there is an expectation of a forecast of 1850, if you notice a black box that is appearing uh, near my cursor and maximum it should go to 2193 and minimum it should be between 1508. So the data should ideally be between 1508 and 2193, whereas the average it should be somewhere close to 1850, that is your expected data. So the idea over here is in terms of forecasting. So based on the past data that you've actually put in over here, the forecasted trend for how long, for whatever longer period you want, and for whatever confidence interval you can choose that I'm 95% sure my data will lie within this range, all those things can be created. Now this is, I believe, an HR dashboard uh, now, or departmental dashboard, staff turnover report we are looking at. Now if I click on any of these options, you would see that my data is changing. Not only that, now if you guys remember that we used to have those conditional formattings and all, uh, uh, we used to use concatenate in order to automate sentences in Excel. We used to use if statement and concatenate to create automated statement. For example, the most pro basic utility used to be that if on the first sheet, and if you have not been doing this in Excel file, you're making a, you've been making a mistake. In the first sheet of Excel, we used to write the year 2018 or uh, PL for the month March, monthly basis, you have to generate reports and all. And in all the sheets, the month used to change automatically because you used to connect it with a concatenate statement. And that is important because if you, you know, forget to change month in one particular sheet, the entire printouts have to be taken again and it becomes an issue. But if you change it in the first sheet and it flows to all the sheets automatically, you have to use concatenate statements in order to do that. Now what happens over here is when I'm clicking on any of these options, sorry about this, when I'm clicking on any of the options over here, if you notice the statements over here are automatically changing. Now the point of this whole Power BI is if you notice the kind of visualization we are able to create.
the kind of visualization, the kind of analysis and even if you see the holders over here, the ones that you're able to create. Now you might not be very comfortable with the window that I'm showing over here. These are the graphs, the visuals over here. These are the tables, the data that I'm taking over here. It's just taking a little time to load. So all the data, all the tables are over here. So these are the tables of data and these are the columns within that table. So these multiple tables can come from multiple sheets and you can establish connections between the sheets. So for example, if I'm looking at HR data, so say for example, HR has given me a database wherein the employee code and a lot of details are given. Then the accounting department gives a data with the employee code and the payments made. Then let's say admin department gave me the employee code and against that, against that, you know, the leaves or uh, of out of pocket expenses or some detail is given. I can take the three Excel sheets and based on employee code being the common reference point, combine all the tables and all the relationships into one single place. And I don't have to work hard on it. And then this is where the relationships are basically uh, uh, we are uh, establishing that how are each of the tables using which parameter each of the tables are connected with each other and then we get an output of this sort. And this is going to be a one time effort. The first one time effort is going to be in terms of learning. The second one time effort is going to be in terms of uh, doing making the file based on your data and then for the rest of your life you're going to be able to just update the data and which also happens automatically because we're using tables. So you understand tables is one of the most beautiful properties of Excel. You don't have to update formulas again and again. Right. So once you start applying the tables and all, it is it is absolutely taking pivots to another level. And that is why it is perfectly called as Power BI business interface. It is a business intelligence, the interface part, the business intelligence part of your uh, X, uh, Microsoft basically. So it's taking. So basically in Excel, what we have is we've got something called ed, uh, Power Query, which is edit query over here. In Excel, you have Power Pivot and that is going to be combining multiple tables together, which we are having anyways over here. And the BI part is basically the visualization as to how you see the data turning out to be the reports and all that you're creating. And the kind of reports you'll be able to create, the kind of output you'll be able to create is going to be absolutely uh, brilliant. I'm just going to close a few files so as to show you some more examples of outputs. That's one more thing. I'll show you one very uh, interesting observation over here. Uh, just a second. Yeah, so now what is happening over here is I'm trying to look at, let's say the products. I'm like trying to analyze the products uh, over here. Now, if I want to look at the top two products over here, do you see that there are two products for every category being shown? AUM, cash flow modeling. So the top two products are being shown. If I look at top three, you see there are three products being shown. And if you people observe, you're seeing that every single product is coming on a separate line. Do you see how the visualization is there? You would not be probably able to do it when you're looking at Excel. So when you go to this particular cell, um, second, it's going to be in the field part, in the product part. No, this is calculated. I had calculated it myself and top selling product. If we see there's a formula that has been incorporated. Now you learn how to write this formula. So basically what happens is once you do this, you can choose your top three products, four products, five products, and there is something called like a unique ad over here. So basically each and every single product is going to be coming on line item. You may not call it product is going to come on a separate line item uh, on a separate line over here. So this we had done. This was okay. This we've seen. This we've seen. So I'm not I have not started teaching. I'm just trying to show you what are the outputs we will be able to generate when we are looking at this one. Uh, then, you know, uh, when we are working with if statement, if say, for example, you have four or five if statements, it becomes quite uh, irritating to create a nested if statement because, you know, framing the formula becomes quite annoying. But over here, what happens is that in the transform, no, uh, in the add column option, you have conditional columns that you can add. Using this option, what happens is in the conditional column, you can keep on adding multiple criteria, you can keep on adding multiple rules, and it is very easy to frame formulas and the formula is automatically going to be created in the background. The formula appears in the background automatically. I'm going fast right now. I'm not trying to teach you anything. I'm just trying to show you what are the advantages of Power BI over the normal Excel file. Then if I am looking, okay, this I've shown you multiple VLOOKUPs. 
and I'm closing the files because there are a lot of files open so I'm not sure how it is it runs it becomes a little slow if I one second I'll show you one more actually just give me a second just a moment so basically it's going to be a very continuous learning process when you're working with Excel so um, we can create these kind of dashboards it's just taking a while to upload so when you're clicking on any of these options the entire database is going to be changing there's some error with my map actually over here there is a map of the country that can come up and the moment the way you change the database the way you're looking at the data I'll have to explain the data to you these are the states worth of data so the way you're changing the data over here the entire analysis changes and along with that along with that your graph also keeps on changing there's some error I'll have to check it just happened before the class started and uh, uh, in this graph so even if you notice if you're doing something there's a cursor uh, there's this uh, a, a load sign which is working wherein the map can change and you can choose locations on the map and based on the location on the map that was there in one of the videos that I had shown to you earlier so based on when you're making a choice on the map basically what happens is that uh, same thing uh, that 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 is also going to be acting as a filter and also on the map what happens is you can choose like say for example if I want my map to uh, be you know in terms of in terms of uh, uh, sales so the sales is there uh, the city in which there is a higher amount of sales the map is going to be showing a larger dot or, or a circle and if the sales in a particular location is in a very very smaller quantity the map is going to be showing a smaller circle on that so you can choose that and that all can happen absolutely in a second basically you just need to learn all these things so it's not going to be taking you like more than five seven minutes to create this dashboard as long as you have the data it's gonna take you five seven minutes but of course the learning process will be more but once you've learned it you guys know you know how to make pivots how much time do you take to make a pivot or to add a slicer to it it hardly takes you a minute it's just about knowing how to do it so that is what you're supposed to be doing with a power bi as well right i'll just attach one one section of this one later on for you to see how it it is working with maps because it's brilliant when it's working with maps right yeah so i actually had a session of this part recorded so i'll just show it to you that how it is working just observe on my screen please see how when I'm clicking on any of these areas it is actually the map is also changing and you, if you notice the circle size on the maps and when I'm clicking on the locations also the graphs are changing accordingly do you see that everyone following this so this is your this is basically what Excel is going to be is probably it's not that Excel cannot do something because in, in your regular work you're going to be using Excel but once your basic outline is ready your data is ready your crunching is done it is important that we move to a higher level also understand the power BI part because now for us pivots is going to be something very very basic so be it power query be it power pivots and be it power BI they're all going to be combined and therefore we are not going to be we're not going to be learning power query or power pivots in the Excel part because a much better version easier version honestly so you don't have to worry about you know that uh, there's something more complicated that you're learning as such because it's going to be more difficult to do power query and power pivot becomes more irritating in Excel because over here the file size also increases it does not hang so often so applying all these things is going to be doing basically what I tried to show you so these are the things that we can do creating dashboards and data cleaning conditional formatting in the graphs I covered um, having the output in such a way where you know you can have that the enter and the three product and the four product one I showed to you the HR dashboard file I showed to you consolidating files together having this kind of visual in terms of the kind of Excel uh, the, the, the Indian graph we had seen so these are the things that Power BI can do so now it's 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 important that we you know we are always updating ourselves and learning more and becoming faster basically so this is how the data can be crunched a huge amount of data and one more thing I actually wanted to show so when we are looking at get data for example I wanted to show the amount of sources of data that you can do over here is you can have your databases from files from databases from power platforms SQLs online services there are there are variety of places from which you can collect data and put it over here SQL servers etc so there's almost everything 
is 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 accessible and you can import data from almost every single source over here so if you look at again the output over here there is a visualization part there is a table part where all the tables all the data that you have collected comes in you have to always convert the data in your excel sheet in a table format then you're going to be able to put it up over here and this is your relationships that you establish between the different tables so that is how the power bi is going to be working so power query power pivot and power bi all three we are going to be studying we are going to be learning rather in the power bi itself you're not going to be doing it from excel because it's just the same thing because it's the same way you can run a power query in excel or you can do an edit query in power bi it's going to be exactly the same thing but it's easier and much faster and better because of the file size also coming down when you're using a power bi so once we start learning we'll be going slow and um, yeah that's 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 all so i hope you guys are really liking because i was really enjoying when i started with a power bi session learning and applying and you know and uh, of course it's important to visualize the data the way it is and the kind of analytics we can do and particularly you know the kind of data cleaning and uh, it becomes a very tedious task when you're cleaning data normally and regularly in excel so the cleaning part actually comes in very very handy and the functions again you would find that the functions are relatively similar but then it's going to be more easier to apply so whatever issues we face in terms of you know working with data in in our regular corporate life or consulting work we now see that those issues of course has been addressed by microsoft and they try to sort it out and uh, uh, you know solve as much as possible with the power bi part right now tableau also is something that you would look at when you're looking at the visualization part there are a lot of companies who use tableau also but then tableau and power bi so the difference i would say is power bi would have much more capacity in terms of in terms of data crunching in terms of the analytics it can run and also being a microsoft product you know i would have a biasness towards it because uh, the kind of one the visualization and two it becomes easier you know when you're picking up data from excel and the kind of output you're creating although tableau has got also brilliant uh, levels of uh, visualization and charts and all but still i mean that is also something you should learn depending on whether it is applicable in applying to your to your uh, work uh, place or not it's a great one to learn but it ha it'll have limited number of uh, analytical options as compared to power bi otherwise tableau is also a good tool so tableau and power bi is something that i can make a comparison with between but uh, r and python and sql becomes a different thing so when you're making a comparison or a choice if you're looking at just visualization you can look at tableau also but if you're looking at analytics and visualization you're looking at power bi and r sql python are different languages because this question comes up quite often as to you know which language should i go for and what to learn i'm planning to put up a blog post very soon on this about all these 5 7 different popular options because people are very confused when i see students you know having an issue with respect to which one to learn first or how which language is going to be applied in terms of finance and of course all the files that we are going to be doing is going to be in perspective of management data hr data finance data marketing data not marketing so much but per se more of analysis of data commercial commerce related data all the accounting related data is what we are going to be working with i hope it's making sense and i did not probably mention so you have basically these three tabs are there over here where you can see the entire screen over here with the visualization the table and the relations and you have the filters just the way you have pivot filters so whatever filters you apply over here so you can apply filters from here and this is your visualization you can create different kinds of charts and graphs and all and it is very very easy to create whatever graphs you know just by clicking over here and these are the fields that you have over here and you also have calculated fields so based on these table data you can create your own fields which is doing calculation so the fields the col columns of calculations may not be there in the tables that you've used from excel but you can create those columns and fields over here so this is how the power bi um uh, spreadsheet looks like if i'm supposed to say and uh, that is what is going to be doing right comfortable are you guys understanding what we are headed towards right and this just probably the beginning of what i'm going to be doing in the next couple of classes so you can understand when it comes to the analysis part or the uh, you know when we take it forward to the level of scenarios and scenario analysis and uh, different situations can be created and you can visualize how your uh, accounting data profit and loss and uh, valuations of companies and all how it can be looking uh, could be looking like under different situations when you're looking at the forecasts and the ranges that are being provided so just imagine what it could be looking like as we move forward when this is what we're looking at in the next couple of classes are you getting it so there's a lot more to do so just push yourself to uh, learn more right